Hey, I'm Bang Bang, and I'm gonna answer some tattoo questions on Twitter. Let's get started. Do you reckon my tattoo artist will be mad at me if I have spots where I'm getting tattooed? Will it make it difficult for her? How do you get rid of acne on your body, please? Your tattoo artist, I hope, won't be mad at you. You can't help blemishes, but in some cases, it can restrict what we can do, and it can affect how it heals. And if you get a tattoo where you don't have blemishes or acne and you develop it, it can actually push ink out. This is what that looks like. There's a spot here that's missing. This is certainly from a pimple or getting scratched. There's another one right here. See a dermatologist, see if you can take care of it and then get a tattoo. Whenever there's some question like that, we're like, see the doctor and see if we can take care of it. From Little Ink Stain, sounds like we can be friends. There has to be a better way to practice tattoos beside fruit and just people. It's pigskin, isn't it? Oh God, that makes me gag. It will. Pigskin doesn't smell good. My apprentice used to have to go to the butcher and pick up pig scraps and skin and tattoo it. And she had to do it quick because we had to get it out of the store because it's smelly. There are now like artificial body parts, so silicones that you can tattoo on and fake skin. That's really good for kind of getting your hand used to the weight of a tattoo machine, drawing with something vibrating, keeping your depths consistent. So just warming your hand up to using the tool. You can't learn how to drive a car in a video game. Like you have to get behind the car and drive. So first off, you should tattoo yourself when you're learning so you can feel what it is you're doing. And yeah, I mean, if you don't trust yourself enough to tattoo yourself, why should other people trust you? So I've tattooed myself I don't know, a dozen times. I still tattoo myself. Yeah, I did my little 14. Left-handed, I did my little number two. It's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Not a cry for help. What's the best way to do a stick and poke tattoo? I've tried in the past and only gotten two dots that stayed. Don't do that, man. You don't know what you're doing. You don't do it. I, I, I don't know how to answer this question. It's like, how do I go get in a car accident? Like, don't. From Mia, okay, but how do tattoo artists do shading? Like, I can hardly do it on paper. How do you do it on skin? Uh, magic. Pure magic. There's a lot of variables that go into tattooing. The needle densities, how they're laid out, depth and pressure, speed of our machine, and then also how diluted the ink is. So we use several different tones to make it happen and we kind of all blend it together. Let me show you how that's done. When we're tattooing, we use several different types of needles, different groupings, different sizes. One that's most specific to shading is called a mag and it's very much like a brush. This one is 15 needles and they're stacked on top of each other. The technique is really to move that across the skin um, evenly, consistently, without damaging it. So that's the task. We use individual grips each time that we tattoo. So this stuff is all disposable. And another interesting thing is they, they don't have to be. These things can be made out of stainless steel and cleaned and reused. In many states, you can even reuse the tattoo needle. So it's really important to ask. We really recommend people always use brand new needles every time. This is the fun part. What I'm doing right now is not necessarily like solid line. I'm trying to kind of brush in with my liner. Make sure I keep that realism because things that are realistic don't have hard lines all around them. So I have to make sure I just put the contrast just where it goes to make sure it still looks realistic. There's all different kinds of like how sharp it's tapered. There's different bluntnesses and different sharpnesses of the needles, different groupings, how close they are together, the different gauges or how thick each needle is. When tattooing started, there was no companies making tattoo needles so you had to make your own so the grouping is specific to the artist so as I'm shading I can dilute my inks with water and I can also move my hand a bit faster to change that tone I can use darker inks and get this area completely too black if I need to I kind of use a sweeping motion so it has to be in the skin the same depth and time in the forward motion as the backward motion the depth is really important that's how you can kind of create one tone of pigment over a really large plane is move your hand the exact same way for several hours in a row. My tattoo is starting to peel and a piece of completely black skin just came off of it in the shower. Help. Yeah, it's normal. You'll be fine. It's not skin that came off. It's dried plasma or, you know, your scab. Your body is regenerating and you have seven layers of skin. We're putting ink in between the third and fourth layer. If it's done successfully, you'll shed your top layer. It's totally normal. How do you fit a skull, rainbow, and a black rose on one tattoo? It's really like the balance you need to find in any design that'll make it timeless. I feel like 
almost any subject matter you can piece together as long as you can make sense of it. You know, when you're old and gray, you're still going to have your skull, black rose, and rainbow tattoo. How do we make it pleasing to the eye? This is how I would do that. So first, I'll pull the client's body part into Photoshop and then organically laying each image on to see which one's, you know, going to kind of be the dominant image and which ones are going to be backgrounds. I want to work with the client to make sure they feel comfortable in the design and people aren't going to just understand when I tell them what I'm going to do. So I want to give them a visual representation of it. Almost every larger tattoo I make, I will work in Photoshop with people. Not everything that I try I like, so this is very much the sketch process. So if we want to do any really fine detailed stuff, we'll do all that by hand really close. If I want to add any motion to that, that's all something that I can add just with some of my smudge tools and we can carry some of that background to fit the body part. And this is all something that I wouldn't necessarily map for myself before I tattoo it, but it's something that helps clients get an idea of what I'm going for on their skin. So now we're really close. I can just put a filter on these that will make it look like a finished tattoo. And then I'm going to pull that rose just in front of that rainbow. And I think that's going to do it. Brighten that rose up a little bit. And there you go, there's a rose and a rainbow and a skull. It doesn't always work, but I think it's pretty cool. I thought it would be worse. <laughs> yeah, I wanna make that tattoo, so holla. Tattoo myth or fact? Color ink hurts more than black ink. Certain techniques hurt more than other techniques. Sometimes color needs more effort from the artist. Skin needs to get beat up a little bit more for that color to put as much pigment into your skin as possible. If a pigment is thicker, it's going to take longer and be a little tougher to get into your skin. So different colors have different consistencies through different companies of brands that make them. White hurts because we're drilling it. We're trying to get as much in there as possible. Tattoos at the insanely itchy stage. Can't decide if best technique is blowing, tapping, itching around it, or distraction through alcohol. Sounds like we can be friends. Yeah, slap it. That's the best one. If you itch it, you can force off scabs or affect it. If there's no scabs on your tattoo, go for it. Itch away, enjoy. Uh, if you have little scabs or it's still healing very fresh within the first you know, 10 days or two weeks, don't itch your tattoo. Your nails are also gross. so. You know, if it's killing you, like, smack it. Um, ice helps, you can put ice on it. Friends with tattoos, I have a question. What's the best way to wrap a fresh tattoo? My Saniderm fell off and it hasn't been a full 24 hours. I got a significant amount of color done and I'm worried about leaking plasma and my tattoo scabbing attaching itself to clothing. It is on your tattoo artist to make sure they educate you when your tattoo is done and that they're there for you when you do have questions. When I do a highly rendered full color tattoo, that's more trauma to skin than any other style because it's very densely tattooed, trying to make color very solid. Your tattoo will ooze more, it'll scab more. Wash your tattoo, all that plasma and gross shit that's gonna come to the surface and leak should be washed off gently with warm water and soap and let it get air. I wrap tattoos for two to 24 hours. Your body really does the healing. The things you put on top of your body are not going to heal you. Your body's gonna heal you. There's things that can promote healing and there's things that can kind of restrict healing. Let me demonstrate that. I'm going to do one final wash of his tattoo. I'm gonna apply some ointment and I'm gonna put plastic on top. We're gonna to make sure the tattoo is really clean before we wrap it. After we wrap it, we'll go through the next steps. In a couple hours, this will all be absorbed by the skin and, and when he takes this bandage off, he'll wash this all off. Ointment is not helping your tattoo heal in any way. It's just keeping your skin protected or moisturized so your body can do the work. So I'm gonna use your chest first. I personally don't use Saniderm. It's essentially a little bit thicker plastic wrap with glue all over it. It's applied to the skin, it sticks on, almost like a secondary skin, so you could, you could touch it similarly to this, but it won't come off, you don't need to tape it on. The healing properties are gone within 24 hours, so you really need to remove that, wash the area, and you can reapply Saniderm. It sticking to a tattoo is not the best for what I do, so I use plain plastic wrap, and I think it works pretty well. For example, if the shirt he wore into this store, if there's any sweat in that shirt, there's bacteria in that. We don't want that in contact with his tattoo. If when he gets home and he takes that shirt off, that brand new tattoo gets scratched by his 
his nails, his watch, even the shower curtain as he's entering. We want to keep it really clean. He's going to get in the shower. He's going to remove this. He's going to wash his hands, wash his tattoo, pat it dry with a freshly cleaned towel and let it get air, let it breathe. And if your tattoo's breathing, your tattoo's healing. What's your favorite tattoo on Justin Bieber? I got to tattoo his torso and fill in a bunch of gaps. And that was really fun. He had a son of God written on his stomach and it looked like it said, send food. So I texted him right away. I was like, man, we need to work on this. He had so many tattoos on his stomach of so many different varying subjects. It was like, how am I gonna tie this together and make this one story? So he had a big cross, send food, an eagle, a bear, and a lion. And I was like, all right, well, how would we tie all this together? So we used some reference of old Renaissance paintings of religious works, try to tie a story of religion and spirit, treating these animals like they are his spirit animals or his protectors, um, and then treating the rest of his torso in the subject of religion. That was challenging. I wish that I could have a blank slate and tattoo him without all the obstacles, but like I kind of like the challenge, so I think that's my favorite. He's got a bunch of crummy ones and he knows it. So do I. When you have a bunch of tattoos and you're kind of a little loose about it, you're gonna get some crummy ones. How do tattoo artists learn and practice their craft? It's a really good question. There is no standard format or education for tattooing. The traditional method to getting into tattooing is to find a great tattoo artist and have them teach you. So uh, an apprenticeship program. It's tough work. You have to draw and draw and draw until you don't want to draw anymore. Your art has to improve. You have to show that person who's teaching you you are worth their effort and that you deserve to be a tattoo artist, that you love tattooing so so much that you'll work your fingers to the bone to become a great one. Hopefully someday there'll be a format to tattoo education. Do tattoo artists ever just refuse to do a horrible tattoo idea because they know the client will regret it later? I will refuse a tattoo if I don't think it's gonna be a great tattoo. So if I can't see it in my head or, or if the idea isn't there for me, it's certainly not gonna be good once it's on you. If I'm not confident in it, I, I am not gonna make it for you. People don't design tattoos for a living. I do. If you're coming to me, I'm not just making your sandwich the way you like it. I'm gonna make the tattoo the way I know it'll be great and unique and fit you and your person. And if I'm not feeling it, I'm not making it. My favorite client in the world is Rihanna. Several times she's come in with ideas I didn't think were gonna work. Google real hard, you'll find her walking around the streets of New York City in 2007 with a stencil of a guitar broken in half with a pair of underwear hanging off it on her arm. It's because we went really far on this design and I wasn't feeling it and I didn't like it and I told her like go home and live with it and we'll talk about it tomorrow and see if you're still feeling it. We'll talk about it in a week. We didn't make it and I'm glad that I kind of pumped the brakes on that. Cara Delevingne has a really iconic lion tattoo on her finger. When I met her she wanted the word lion L-I-O-N, straight down her finger. Your skin on your finger is really inconsistent. It's very hard to tattoo fingers in general, let alone moving through different types of skin in a very small area. I want tattoos to be visually appealing. I think it would be hard to read the word lion down her finger, number one. I think it would have been inconsistent if we'd done that text. And so I kind of made the recommendation that we treat it like a piece of jewelry and do very similar to what I have on my fingers and um, make it more of a ring, more of a decoration. Let's make an actual lion's face. And credit to her, she was like, yeah, I'm down. And it was cool. I've seen that tattoo all over the world and big billboards. And she's really like uh, kind of transcended you know, modeling and bridge that gap between fashion and tattooing as much as Rihanna has. Yo, what happens if you get a big ass tattoo on your thigh or something and you lose a bunch of weight and your thigh is super tiny now? Your tattoo's gonna be super tiny now. Tattoo's gonna move with your skin. So if your skin changes, shape, size, your, your tattoo will do the same. Oftentimes the reverse thing happens if someone gains weight, your tattoo can grow or it can migrate. Based on where the skin stretches from, the tattoo will move. If your tattoo is on a point where your body is stretching from, the tattoo will stretch. This happens on pregnant women on their stomachs. And sometimes it can come back to normal and be, and be just fine. Uh, and sometimes it won't. Stretch marks can move through a tattoo and really distort the image. Do artists at Bang Bang know how to tattoo colors on brown skin? Because I'm looking through IG and all I see is white people. I get this a lot and I would say, look harder. We live in New York City. The minority of our clientele are white. People are from all over the world and tones of skin are really hard to see when you're shooting just an arm. We often desaturate a photograph to take away the redness of a fresh tattoo and that 
changes the tone of the photo. When you're seeing an arm from here to here, you can't tell that person's ethnicity. Don't assume that every client you're looking at is has white skin. It's really not, not the case. We tattoo a ton of athletes, celebrities. Forget ethnicity for a moment. Think about your tone of your skin, because that's how we see it. So if you're gonna draw a picture, and you take a white piece of paper, and you wanna draw on it, it, it's gonna show a lot. And if you take a darker piece of paper, and you use a yellow marker on it, it's not gonna come through. But if you use a darker tone, like a red, blue, in some cases greens, they come through a lot more. So based on the hue of someone's tone, we kind of pick which colors are gonna work best. This question always upsets me because I feel like people feel left out, and you're not at all. I think you just can't tell what ethnicity people are in our photos. So yeah, don't feel that way. Sorry, it comes off that way. What's the worst tattoo you have ever seen? So many celebrities are running through my head that have bad tattoos and I'm like, I don't wanna be that guy. I think my least favorite tattoo that I've seen, just a really big tattoo of huge roses, larger than life, on someone's whole butt. That's not super attractive. From Laura, how do tattoo artists draw perfect circles? With extreme difficulty. Tattooing is very stressful. There's nothing that shows imperfection like a circle or two circles right next to each other. It's like really easy for the eye to see mistakes. We do it really carefully, really slowly, and we kind of dive in and hope. At the end, we're like, whew, all right, I made it. Tattoos, do you have any? If you do, what's your favorite one? I have a bunch, but mine would have to be some of the faces I have. I've always really loved my hand tattoos. They're all really special milestones for me. I got the Statue of Liberty tattooed on my hand when I had tattooed in New York for 10 years. And I got the Empire State Building tattooed on my hand when I thought that I had opened the best tattoo shop in New York. And I have Mickey Mouse, because I like Mickey. I hope I've answered your questions. I hope you've learned something and I hope you go get great tattoos.